Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Having said that, <laughs> Pastor Martha, Pastor Esther, Mary, Tom Witt for some reason, <laughs> and many, many people who, off, who lead this Sunday morning worship with us are not here. Many of them are at the women's retreat. I tell you this. Uh, because uh, my name is Grant Stevenson. This is Catherine Preuss, Laura, Rico. We're going to do our best. <laughs> but things could happen. I think that God is here among us and that we will worship. And if there's a surprise, we'll just consider it the Holy Spirit knocking on the door. Each of you are welcome in worship this morning, and just as we are, this is the season of Lent, and we are reminded that Jesus' healing power is here and among us, and I invite you to take a moment to welcome one another each mo uh, this morning. If you are joining us on YouTube this morning, we will share in Holy Communion this morning, our meal where Jesus meets us and nourishes us with abundant life. So please have bread and wine or crackers or whatever you use available for our meal together. I would especially like to welcome any newcomers or visitors this morning if you are new. To Our Savior's Lutheran Church, we invite you to fill out a yellow card. There should be one in your pew. And place it in the offering plate when that comes by later in the service. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts and draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are trapped in sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred for all these things and for what sins only you know. Forgive us all. Amen. Here is a flood of grace out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through the healing power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hymn 793.
The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy One, just as you called Abraham and Sarah and made your covenant with them, so you call each of us and guide us by your promises of faithfulness and love. Open our hearts today to hear Jesus calling us to follow him in the way of radical love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, Yahweh appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make a covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you, and rulers shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, You shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Rulers of people shall come from her. This is the word of life. A reading from the writings of Oscar Romero, former Archbishop of San Salvador, who was a bold advocate for oppressed people. 
He was killed while celebrating Mass, but his spirit lives on. April 1st, 1979. To each one of us, Christ is saying, if you want your life and mission to be fruitful, like mine, do as I. Be converted into a seed that lets itself be buried. Do not be afraid. Those who shun suffering will remain alone. No one is more alone than the selfish, but if you give your life out of love for others, as I give mine for all, you will reap a great harvest. You will have the deepest satisfactions. Do not fear death or threats. God goes with you. This is the word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Jesus said this all quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed. And he comes in the glory of of his Abba with the holy angels. This is the good news. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's sermon. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Hi. Good morning. In case you didn't hear when we first started church this morning, I'm, I'm different than the one who used to, use it, usually talks to you. I'm Pastor Grant, and it's nice to be with you today. And I was wondering, has anyone ever felt nervous? Have you? I have. Have you ever felt, have you ever felt afraid? You have? What kind of thing? Oh, when you were getting your ears pierced? Yeah, that would make me afraid, too. <laughs> Anybody else? What, what kinds of things make you afraid? Just stuff? Yeah, thanks, Beta. Yeah? Heights. Heights? Yeah, I'm a little afraid of heights, too. What else? I'm a little afraid of... 
the tops of towers. Yeah. And shots. Right. We've been getting a lot of those lately. <laughs> yeah. These are, I'm, I, a lot of the things that you're mentioning are things that make me nervous or a little bit afraid too. They may have anything else. Well, you get afraid sometimes, and I get afraid sometimes. I'm pretty sure Peter in our gospel lesson gets afraid sometimes. But I noticed, I think even Jesus got afraid sometimes. Sometimes. And you know what Jesus did when he was afraid? He reminded himself that God was near. And sometimes when I'm afraid, I have a little prayer that I pray, that I pray by myself. I pray, and I breathe with it. I, I, I breathe, and the words are, I breathe in, and I pray, be still and know. And I breathe out that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. You can have that prayer for yourself. Sometimes it helps if we're feeling nervous, if we're feeling afraid, to remember with our breath and with our mind and with our words that God is near. Want to try it? Um, you can do the breathing part. I have to, because I, I can't talk and breathe in at the same time. <laughs> Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And then after I pray that for a while, sometimes it gets shorter. Be still and know. Be still and know. Try that next time you're feeling afraid. Thanks for coming up. If you'd like, you can go. Do they go? Where do they go? To the nursery. To the nursery. <laughs> go, to, go to the nursery. Grace to you in peace from God. It's always a pleasure when, uh, for me, maybe not for you, <laughs> I shouldn't assume, always a pleasure for me uh, when I get to speak to you, to bring the gospel. And I always wonder about this fellow Peter. Does it seem to you like it does to me that Peter is sometimes the poster child for getting things wrong in, in the Gospels. He's used that way in, in the Gospels. I myself am a little sympathetic to Peter. Well, we're, we're going we're gonna to go after him in a minute, but I'm a little sympathetic. I'm a little sympathetic because in this case, for example, in the Gospel reading for today, in this case, Peter and the rest were just admonished to keep things quiet. The verse before, if you go, if you look in the Bible, the verse before our reading for today, they're just then admonished to keep things on the down low. So when Jesus begins speaking quite openly, Mark says, when Jesus begins speaking quite openly about how he must suffer and how this will happen, he just said to the disciples, keep it down low. He just said that, but Jesus speaks quite openly, and so Peter admonishes him. I mean, regardless of how upset Peter might have been about the content of what Jesus was saying, Peter admonishes him, surely not, Lord, surely not. And then the famous retort from Jesus, get behind me, Satan. Ouch. 
And I feel like I kind of understand where Peter was coming from. But Satan, the wicked one, Peter, the evil one, Peter, the tempter, the tempter, Peter. Remember when Jesus was driven out into the wilderness right after his baptism, he was driven out right after the words that Jesus heard from the heavens being ripped open, you are my beloved. Right after that, driven out into the wilderness and then tempted. Tempted with power, tempted with glory, tempted with fame. Here in our reading, I think maybe is perhaps one of Jesus' most vulnerable moments. Speaking to, speaking to his disciples about what's to come. Suffering, rejection, and death. Perhaps he was already suffering while wrestling internally with the temptation to walk away from all of that. Perhaps he was already suffering when he said to those who were following him, you need to know this. This is what's going to happen. He was, ad- he was admitting his hardest truth. That's why I thought I would talk to the kids today about sometimes being afraid, about sometimes being nervous. And I think all of us have some experience with this, even if our experience pales in comparison to what Jesus was admitting to his disciples. Even if our experience pales, we have experience with this on some level, don't we? Have you ever tried to do something hard? I mean, hard for you. Tried to give up sugar. Tried to give up alcohol or some other drug. Or maybe you were trying to do something like train for a marathon. Something hard. You're trying to do this. You've decided to do this. You know this is in your future. You've decided to do these things, and you know it's really hard, and the worst thing that a friend of yours can do is say, when you're facing something like that, oh, come on. It's my birthday. Or it's your birthday. Or you don't really have a problem. Or come on. You can skip a day of training. I mean, what's a day? You already have all of the forces, all of the voices inside of you that want to run from your commitment. It's already there. You got up that morning that way. You have already have all of the forces inside of you that want to run. And now there's a voice bringing that same message from the outside. Now imagine that it's not just giving up sugar or training uh, for a marathon, but facing suffering and humiliation and rejection and death. In that moment, I think maybe any of us would be just as clear as Jesus was, that you are now hearing the voice of the tempting one. Get behind me, Satan, he says to him. I think we're getting a glimpse into Peter's trepidation. That seems obvious. But I suspect that such a quick, sharp response from Jesus is showing us that we're also getting a glimpse into Jesus' trepidation. It's always been of help to me, of assurance to me in my own faith whenever I notice that Jesus faces the kinds of struggles that I face, the kinds of temptations from within and from without, to veer from the path, to go another way, to go an easier way, to do something different. But as the perfecter of our faith, Jesus stays clear. Get behind me, Satan, he says. Get behind me, tempter, he says. To Peter. So what does that mean for us? What does it mean for us? We are on together a Lenten journey. We are on together 
a life journey goes far beyond the weeks of Lent. And we get afraid to move forward too, from time to time. Maybe all the time. We get afraid to move forward. There are two things in this reading from Mark that I'd like to talk about. One of them, one of them is shame. We read this gospel lesson this morning, and at the end, there is one of these uh, verses that most of us who preach, I think, would just soon leave out. This one. Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation Of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in glory. I would just soon leave those words out. And the reason that I would leave them out is because I know that those words themselves trigger shame. They trigger shame in me, but I think they trigger shame that's devastating for others. Jesus seems to be saying, "Those those who would reject what I'm saying. But I think there's another way to read this. Let's not separate that last verse from the conversation before. Let's not separate it from the conversation before where Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. I think it's the same conversation. So when Jesus says, those who would be ashamed of me, who is he talking about? He's not just shifting and changing the conversation to those of you and those of me who can't follow the track on the gospel life, he's still talking about Peter. He's still talking about Peter. Peter is saying, surely not you. Surely not you, Lord. Surely not the suffering. Surely not the devastation. Surely not the death. Surely not. Jesus says, those who are ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of. I think he's adding fuel to the fire to the conversation that he's having with Peter. So what in the world is there for us? Because we're a little bit like Peter. What's, what in the world is there for us? I think we have to let Jesus be Jesus. The thing, the mistake that Peter's making is that he doesn't want to let Jesus be Jesus. I will face suffering and I will face death. Surely not, Lord. But Jesus said just before this, if you want to come after me, you deny yourself. You deny yourself and then you will follow me. If you want to come after me, I'll read it to you. If any of you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. I want to suggest to you that there are two tones of voice, two different tones of voice that we could read that in. Here's one. If any would want to come after me, they must deny themselves. Take up their cross and follow me. Okay, that seems like what I grew up with. There's another possible tone of voice. Jesus is trying to explain This is how it works. The world will reject love. The world will reject forgiveness. The world will reject grace. That is why I am going down this path. And the rejection will involve suffering and ridicule and death. If you want to follow me, If you want to follow in the way of love, if you want to follow in the way of grace, grace, if you want to follow in the way of forgiveness, the world will will reject that in you as well. So you can take up your cross and you can follow me. To me, the difference in tone makes all the difference. Because one, the first, here's how it's going to be. On the worst days, we have Jesus. This is what he does. He's the beacon. 
the eternal beacon of sacrificial love. He invites us onto that path. He invites us into that life. He admonishes us so that it's the only place there actually is life. But it's an invitation, not a preemptive condemnation. It's the way that I can hear these words. And it's the way that, on occasion, you'll find me acting out of love. On occasion, you'll find me acting forgiving. On occasion, you'll find me being graceful. But when you do, it's only because I'm trying to follow in the way of the one who has said, this is the way to life. Amen. Hymn 639. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, for the well-being of creation, and the world in crisis. We turn to you for clarity of purpose, holy God. Instill in us the gifts of the Spirit poured out in baptism, and let the mind of Christ guide the church. Give wisdom and discernment to our leaders, especially pastors Martha and Esther, our church council and committees, during these challenging times for the mission of God in the world. We turn to you for, pro, pro, for protection, creator of the heavens and the earth. Preserve lives and ecosystems threatened by pollution and a changing climate. Cleanse the earth's waters and restore the soil. Preserve rainforests and deserts, prairies and forests, 
as well as a great, a great diversity of wildlife that generations to come may cherish and enjoy your creation. We turn to you for justice. Uphold the worth and dignity of every person, especially any who experience hatred and rejection because of gender, sexual orientation, color, ethnicity, religion, or national origin. We turn to you for healing. Send relief to any who suffer because of war and violence. Shelter unhoused people. Befriend those who are lonely. Bring hope to any in despair and console the bereaved. We name before you all these persons on our minds and hearts. Cam and the family of Paul Rogers. The Rody Schwain family. Reginald, Hawa, Susan, Jim, Joel, Sarah, Kenny, Emily, Michael, Anton, Noah, and Deanna. We also pray for the residents of the Ninokasi encampment, as well as peace in Ukraine, Gaza, Sudan, and other troubled places in the world. We turn to you for commitment. Remind us of your faithfulness to this congregation. Increase our trust in your guidance and keep us near the cross. Grant that our acts of service will express the sacrificial love of Christ. We turn to you for renewal. Grant rest and new insight to the women of our Saviors and Valley of Peace congregations as they gather and retreat together this weekend. May new learnings about forgiveness and reconciliation be found for all of us. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace and God of glory, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share a word of peace with one another.
The God of life be with you always. And with you too. Lift up your hearts, lift up your minds. Lift them joyfully unto God. Thank our gracious God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty, merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the resurrection feast that renewed in the gifts of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy God, source of power, source of light, heaven and earth are full of you, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one. mighty and merciful God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The universe declares your praise through the water, across the wilderness, out of exile and into the future. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to all, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O God, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. Joining with the people of God throughout the ages, let us pray with confidence. Our Mother, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Everyone is invited to feast at God's table. The ushers will guide you as you come up, and when it's your turn to come forward, you will grab a compostable cup. Uh, there are gluten-free wa wafers available for those who need them. Just ask your server. We have both wine and grape juice. The wine is the dark colored, the grape juice is the light, and there's a little gold band around the chalice with the grape juice. If you have mobility issues, please let your usher know, and we will bring the meal to you. During communion, we also have stations at the baptismal font for prayer for healing and anointing and blessing. And Christy and Jeannie will be there. So if you would like 
stop there on your way back to your pew after you have communed. For those of you joining online, hear these words addressed to you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Come, Jesus' power is in this meal. You may be seated. We may need a couple more people to serve. Sing back what you hear.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace forever. Amen. Please be seated and those who have announcements for the community, uh, please come forward for them. Okay, so, hi. A lot of you know me. I'm Otilia Abrahamson. I'd just like to introduce myself. And who likes Girl Scout cookies? Raise your hand. Okay, I see most of us like them. So, if you would like to buy some Girl Scout cookies, I do, I am a Girl Scout, and you can ask me. Just ask my dad if you need more information, but um, after, after um, worship, just come up to me and ask. I'll see what I, I don't have much. I, I didn't bring many. I brought a lot of variety, but not many of each variety, so supplies are limited. <laughs> supplies. Yes, there is, like, order. I can get them to you later. There's like a whole app thing. You can ask my dad more about that. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Sorry. Hi. My name is Elizabeth. Um, I attend the University of Minnesota, and I'm a part of the University of Minnesota University Singers. And I have a couple of choir opportunities if you would like to come watch. So this is a little bit in the future, but with my as far as um, coming, I just wanted to put that out here now. So um, on March 24th, which is a Sunday a month from now, at 2.30, there is a cathedral concert, which has um, the Maroon Singers, the University of Minnesota Women's Chorus, and then also the University Singers. And it is at the St. Paul Cathedral at 2.30, and we'll be going to around 4-ish. So if you'd like to come to that, that's open free to the public. But then also, this one's March 5th, which is a Friday. And I believe it starts at 7.30. This one is a ticketed concert. And if you want to buy tickets, they're at the Oratorio Society, or http backslash oratorio.org. Um, and the tickets are $35 for the premier seating and then $25 for the general admission. But this music is the story of the three holy children. And it is the first time it has been heard since the 1800s when it was originally um, sang. But yeah, thank you. Morning. I'm John Schwain. I serve as one of the campus pastors at Augsburg University, just a few blocks from here. And uh, our campus ministry department every year sponsors a lecture called the Fosdick Lecture in Preaching, Harry Emerson Fosdick, whose text we actually heard the choir sing today in their anthem. Um, he was an early 20th century preacher, and, you know, 100 years ago he, he preached a sermon called shall the fundamentalists win, kind of a response to the rising um, trend of Christian fundamentalism in the churches. And on our uh, Fosdick lecture uh, this Thursday, we have Reverend Barbara Lumblad joining us, um, who is a wonderful preacher and was a homiletics professor for many years at the Union Theological Seminary in New York City, not far from where Harry Fosdick preached that sermon. And her title is going to be Shall the Christian Nationalists Win? So um, she's giving a lecture, uh, and I think that feels relevant in election year as we see uh, some of the discourse happening in our own nation. She'll, at 10 o'clock at Augsburg University in Hoverston Chapel this Thursday, February 29th, she'll give a lecture um, about how we preach and address the growing threat of Christian nationalism in church and society. And then at 1130, 
we'll have a worship service, our daily chapel service at Augsburg, where we'll hear uh, Reverend Lundblad preach for us. So 10 o'clock on February 29th uh, is a lecture. If you want to stay, 11.30 is worship with wonderful preaching. Um, you can come to only one or the other. It's free and open to the public. If you want to get that all in writing and also pre-register, you can go to augsburg.edu backslash Fosdick, F-O-S-D-I-C-K, augsburg.edu backslash Fosdick. will show you the schedule that I just outlined, plus it'll give you a way to, if you want to do, join us by webinar online, you can register for that at that website too. See you on Thursday. So hi, I'm Glenda Elder, and I kind of have two hats on. We're doing a great job on collecting plastic bags, but we're not done yet. So if you'd like to bring some, we'll take them in. And then my next hat is um, I'm kind of helping my sister sell um, hats and fingerless gloves. We don't have snow, but we can sure be doing a winter fashionista style. So if you want to see colors and whatnot, let me know. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gail Lamb, and a lot of, I've been a member of this congregation for a long time, and a lot of you know that a lot of my work history has been dealt with food. And so I've been in the, I was in the food industry for at least 50 years. So now, I've been volunteering at the Calvary Food Shelf, and it is serving a large number of families, and with little children, but also vulnerable adults, and we are thankful for the support this congregation is giving through Mission of the Month for Calvary Food Shelf. There is also opportunities for people to volunteer, and the logistics are its very easy to volunteer there, and we give the customers a respectful way to come in and get food. So if anybody's interested with more information, you can certainly contact me after worship. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jeannie, and I want to tell you about a couple opportunities this week. The Spirit is moving on uh, in the world and with us. We have living questions on Wednesday night. We've had a great uh, gathering last Wednesday. Everybody is welcome to come any Wednesday night. The meal is at uh, 5.30, and uh, at 6, we start just a conversation about living questions. So it be wonderful if anybody else would like to join us. Um, and the second thing I want to mention is Sunday. Next Sunday after church, bring your lunch. Come for uh, <laughs> lunch and learn, right, Glenda? <laughs> Glenda's going to show us, or uh, some people are going to show us how to make uh, the plastic bag mats. But most important, it's about fellowship and having fun. So if you'd like to stay after lunch on Sunday, come on over. We'll have coffee and tea. Dan Swenson Clap, the theme seems to be food. Um, I'm not wearing my butter hat, but I almost always do. And I realize, oh, I'm not wearing my butter hat, but today I am. March 1st, Friday, is indeed the first Friday. And although the women are on retreat, uh, the men will eat. Um, you, we are open at 7 to 9 for men to join us at the community table. And we love to have that ongoing gathering of community building uh, at Butter Bakery. And I've just want to say, it's been so many years, <laughs> but every year, every month, that first Friday just starts my month off well. Thank you. Jeannie mentioned the meals at 5.30 on Wednesday. If you ordered a book uh, for Lent, either the Forgiveness book or the Romero book, or both of them, uh, they're in the office, so take a copy and then cross your name off the list. Uh, and then um, you can put money in there if you like. Uh, also, just one other announcement. Please interact with the boards. They're outside right there in the narthex uh, about the Our Savior's Lutheran Church space needs for ministry over the next 25 years. Uh, input would be really welcome and useful before March 15th. Please stand for the blessing.
Beloved, we are God's own people, held in promise, called to love. God bless you and keep you. God's face shower mercy on you. God fill you with courage and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.